So I've been using split keyboards for quite some time, and most notably, I've been using the Kinesis Freestyle Edge and the Ultimate Hacking Keyboard, both of which have a more traditional staggered layout. I was immediately sold on the split design when I first tried it, because it really helped me reduce a lot of pain and awkward postures. Finally, I could properly touch type without having my hands cramped up in the middle of the desk on the keyboard. But I was still very intrigued by the idea of a curved key wells, which is what really drew me to the Kinesis Advantage 360. Additionally, quite a few of my coworkers were using an older version of the Advantage keyboard, the Advantage 2, which further convinced me to give this keyboard a try. First, let's cover the basics, the design and look of the Advantage 360. Then we'll talk about the software. And then near the end of this review, I'll share my personal thoughts of using this type of keyboard as my daily driver for an extended period of time. One of the most defining characteristics of this keyboard is its concave design, meaning that the key wells are curved inwards towards the user, forming a bowl-like shape. I have to say the design is very intimidating to those who don't know what this type of keyboard is. This design helps reduce finger travel distance and strain while also promoting a more natural hand and finger position. It also features a columnar staggered key layout, arranging the keys in a straight vertical column rather than the traditional staggered rows. This aligns with the natural motion of our fingers and reduces lateral finger movement. Being able to separate and rotate the modules independently keeps my wrist straight and reduces ulnar deviation. This flexibility really helps in maintaining a comfortable typing posture. Now, Kinesis does offer the ability to use this accessory that attaches and fixes the position so that it becomes more similar to the older version of the Advantage 2 series keyboard. But honestly, having the ability to quickly adjust the angle is just absolutely the best. It's something that I can't go back to a normal regular keyboard. Now, regarding the design, I really like the dark gray color. It looks very industrial. The two-tone keys are not only functional, but also very aesthetically pleasing to look at. I'll talk more about the keycaps later, but overall the design feels very solid. This keyboard features three adjustable tenting positions with the default setting offering a slight tent. Tenting, which raises the center of the keyboard, promotes a more natural wrist position, reducing strain during typing. Adjusting the tenting is straightforward and user-friendly. Simply push the button and lift to change the angle. Unlike other mechanisms that require unscrewing or twisting, this method is really quick and convenient. I also found tenting to be really comfortable, especially when I'm not at my desk. For example, when I'm in my bed typing or on my couch. So Kinesis sells an optional accessory, the magnetic palm rest. And I find these to be really fascinating. I love the fact that they just snap on perfectly. You don't have to go out and buy any sketchy third-party accessory. These are official and not a, not a bad price. Now, do you really need them? Well, for my personal use case, I didn't find them that much more comfortable than just the default palm rests that are integrated. I really like the integrated palm rests. They're very comfortable by default, but if you really do want to have more of a floating wrist, which is advised by professional touch typists and keep your hands in the most neutral positions, then this definitely will do the job. So it will promote you to type in a more professional floating type of way. The layout of this keyboard is quite interesting. It has 76 keys. For those who prefer having a numpad or function roll, you need to use layers to access them. They advertise that you can easily get to the numpad by using the numpad layer. And I'm very used to this type of layout and much prefer using layers because it means that you have to move your hands less around the keyboard, which promotes ergonomics. For example, you don't have to reach for the arrow key cluster or switch to the home and end like you would do on a traditional 10 keyless keyboard. You have all these functions on a secondary layer near the home row if you configure it that way. The default key mapping is quite good. It starts as a very good starting point, but I immediately wanted to customize this keyboard to match the layout that I'm more familiar with. We'll get into more details about that in the software section. Now let's move on to the thumb cluster area. I have to say, both the larger keys are very, very comfortable to reach with the hands. They just fall naturally into the position of where my thumb would go. In my configuration, I've binded them to tap and hold functionality. So you can tap it once for let's say space or backspace or enter, and then hold it down for let's say another layer. What's really cool is that you can hit all the keys, for example, the ones on the outer edge, control and alt or page up and page down very easily because the buttons are designed in such a way that they stand out a little bit taller. So they make it very easy to reach. All right, let's talk about keyboard switches. Unfortunately, you cannot swap out these switches as they are not hot swappable. And in my opinion, that's totally reasonable because this is a very customized type of keyboard with a very unique manufacturing process. The two key switches that they offer are Gatteron Brown or Kale Box Pink. 
They also offer built to order kale box white clicky switches, and they partner with a company called Upgrade Keyboards to do pretty much any type of custom build. So Gateron Brown switches have about 55 grams of actuation force, providing tactile feedback with some noise. The box pink switches are super low force at 35 grams. They're linear and also very, very quiet. In this particular version, the one I have, I have box pink switches. I have to say they are definitely very light, very quiet, and very well suited for an office environment. Now, interestingly, when I reviewed the Kinesis Freestyle Edge, I really ended up liking its brown switches. I miss the tactile bump, which sends a signal to my brain that I've activated the key. This allows me to bottom out less, thereby reducing finger strain. Now, one major benefit with pink switches is that because they're so light, it's so easy to hit multiple keys at the same time, especially on the home row. For example, let's say you have a key combo with shift, control, and alt plus some letter. It's just so effortless to do it. Same applies for combos where you apply two or three keys all at once to produce a different type of key. Now, all these fancy features can be obtained without any programming, and I'm gonna talk about it later in the software section. Let's talk about the keycaps. These keycaps are quite unique compared to other keyboards because they are not all uniform. This makes it a little bit more challenging to find replacements or move the keys around if you're not using a, tr a traditional QWERTY layout. Most notably, the home row ASDF on the left side have a different color and different shape compared to other keyboards. Now, I really like this design because it really helps you identify the home row keys, which is crucial for touch typing, and especially if you're gonna configure this keyboard with home row modifiers, which I'll talk about in the software section. So Kinesis offers several varieties of PPT keycaps with different colors and key layouts like QWERTY or Dvorak. My specific model actually uses shine through ABS plastic keycaps to support the white backlighting. I actually kind of prefer ABS as I find it more smooth to the touch than the more gritty PBT keycaps in some cases. Now, in terms of Bluetooth connectivity, I had no issues. One of the coolest features is that you can hold down the default modifier key and switch between five different Bluetooth profiles. This allows you to connect it to your MacBook, PC, or other devices very seamlessly. It wakes up my MacBook when I press the keys and the battery goes to sleep when the keyboard is inactive for a long time. Now, yes, you can still connect this keyboard with a wire, the way it works is that the left module connects to the computer and acts as the primary module that communicates all the keyboard signals. The right module always communicates with the left module over Bluetooth, so you can't plug the right module directly into the computer. However, you can still have both of the halves plugged in, powered by USB. And Kinesis has assured me in the instructions that I read that keeping it plugged in all the time won't affect the lithium ion batteries, which is great because maybe you prefer to have it always connected. The cool part about this is that even though they're both connected, you're not gonna have any dangling wire between the two halves. Overall, the Bluetooth connectivity is fantastic. I can even take this keyboard to my bed or on the couch and type very comfortably thanks to how robustly built how sturdy this keyboard is. And if you're a heavy touch typist, you, you know, type very fiercely onto the keyboard, this keyboard isn't going to budge at all. This keyboard also features a white backlight, which while not as fancy as RGB lighting is totally fine for my needs. You can turn off the lights, you can turn off the Bluetooth and just have it connected and just work like a regular keyboard, saving you any kind of battery frustration if you really care. There are also three LED lights near each thumb cluster on the left and right, which provide very helpful indicators. They show things like the battery level, and they also indicate what modifier layer is enabled or toggled on. All right, so let's talk about my favorite feature and most distinguishing aspect of the professional version of this keyboard, and it's the ZMK open source platform. Now there's one feature that is interestingly not a featured on the professional version, and you can't really get it with ZMK, and that's the ability to remap keys right on the keyboard without having to go into the software, and also to have dynamic macros, meaning you just hit a key and just type a bunch of commands and then, hit, and then stop recording, and then there you've basically recorded either a remap or a macro. Now I've experienced the convenience of this feature on the Freestyle Edge and I really, really enjoy it. And I wish this was something that the professional version had, but I just want to make that one little distinguishing note between the pro and the regular version, aside from wireless connectivity as well. So you still get the ability to reprogram macros and remap keys, but you have to use the ZMK software. Now, Kinesis offers their own version of the software, which is a GUI based system. All you have to do is use their website and then you can assign keys and assign special types of macros and whatever you want with their software. But I did find a third party alternative software, which offers way more advanced capabilities. And in my opinion is a lot more user friendly. 
So on a typical reprogrammable keyboard, you would open up its proprietary software, for example, like the smart set software for the original version of this keyboard, plug it in through, uh, you know, your USB, and then make the mappings in the software. And then all you have to do is hit save and it automatically saves your keyboard, you're done. It's very simple. Now with the Kinesis Advantage 360 using the Pro ZMK version, it's a little bit different, but it's still going to be user friendly. And no, don't worry, you don't need to program anything. Everything is going to be web based and it's very easy. All right, the first step, you're going to create a GitHub account. This is free and very straightforward. So once you've logged into your GitHub account, you just go to the special link that Kinesis provides and it's a GitHub repository. And what you're going to do is click a button called fork. This basically creates a copy of the repository in your GitHub account so that you own it basically. Now this is quite beneficial because it keeps a historical commit history, allowing you to track the changes and revert to an old version if necessary. You effectively have a backup. In the next step, you're gonna visit Kinesis's website, which is the key map editor. Now through that website, you're gonna log into your GitHub account through this app and only authenticate the repository you had recently forked. This UI allows you to do common remaps such as rebind keys, set tap and hold functionalities, which are very, very essential. For example, you can set a thumb key to act as a space when tapped and then activate a sec secondary function when held. So maybe activate your layer. For more advanced features like home row modifiers or combos, holding multiple keys to create another key or tap dancing, double tap, triple tap, whatever you want. In order to do all that, you can optionally use a different third-party software. This is open source. It was created by someone who really built a great interface. Think of it as an alternative key map editor that covers all the basic functionality as the official one. For example, saving your profile to your GitHub repository but also offer a more user-friendly experience. For example, there's more user-friendly descriptions of each type of key code that is offered by ZMK, and of course, all the advanced features. On the left side for the official Kinesis software, you can just see BL underscore DEC. I wouldn't know what that means unless I had to look up the ZMK documentation, but on the right side, you can see it's backlight decrease. So not only are there advanced features, there's some really good bulk editing features that make quickly assigning all your keys really, really fast and easy. This is something that is not offered on the official Kinesis key map editor. The following instructions are applicable for both the official or third party key map editor. So after customizing your layer, hit save and commit the changes to your repository. This is all done through the UI. This will trigger a GitHub action process that builds your custom firmware in the cloud. It only takes a few minutes. And for the final step of this keyboard, you will flash each side of this keyboard. Download the firmware files from the GitHub Actions process. Next, plug in the left side of the keyboard first. Enable the bootloader by either tapping the special button with a pin or holding the modifier key and hitting the bootloader button. Copy the firmware onto the left module and repeat this process for the right module. You'll see all these lights flashing and blinking on your keyboard. That means that it has been successfully copied over. And that means you flashed your keyboard and you're ready to get going. Now for further customization, you can always return to the web configurator to tweak your layout and repeat the process. You don't even need to have the keyboard connected while you do this. You can, you can just go onto your account and just start modifying anywhere you want in the world. Now, after having done this a couple of times, I personally had my keyboard configured exactly how I wanted to do it. So having to do a few extra steps and maybe wait for the build isn't a big deal if you really know what you're doing and know how to customize the keyboard. So let's conclude this video. How was typing on this keyboard? Well, I have to say, thanks to the concave design and the more natural movement, I really love the fact that I can move my fingers less to hit certain keys. Now, I will admit, it's a bit weird coming from a traditional staggered keyboard where I had to move my hands around a lot. For example, when I hit C and D, you almost instinctively have to force yourself to move your fingers less in order to get used to this type of keyboard. Ever since I switched to a split ergo keyboard, I've had to really learn how to properly touch type. And this is definitely the case with this type of keyboard. You will need to learn how to touch type before committing to this style. If you don't have a split keyboard, I recommend learning to touch type on the website, for example, keybr.com. Once you've mastered that, I would move on to monkey type. Just make sure you practice with punctuations and shift keys and not just easy lowercase words. In my personal experience, I found that having a split keyboard really forced me to touch type. It just made it a lot more easier. I couldn't cheat when I had a split keyboard versus when I had a regular keyboard, I would always kind of type really poorly and wouldn't follow the proper finger assignments to the specific rows. Now there are cases where I have to use my mouse on my right hand and the keyboard with my left hand. For example, gaming, that's a very obvious one. Premiere Pro, I'm using my mouse constantly. And unfortunately I just can't never not use the mouse. So I did find using this keyboard a little bit awkward with heavy left hand usage. Typically I use the control with my pinky and I still use my fingers to 
not properly touch type and then do things like copy paste. And because it has a concave key well, it was a little bit awkward and hard and harder to get used to, but I did remap all the keys to look more like a traditional keyboard where the control is on the far bottom left side of the keyboard. You can still get away with it. And I would even argue that you could probably game on this keyboard as well. Now you might be asking, is it really hard to switch from this type of keyboard to let's say a regular keyboard, let's say your laptop? Well, in my opinion, I think it's doable, especially if you learn the proper touch typing, that motion is still embedded. You just have to remember that when you're on this keyboard, you have to go more vertically rather than to the side on a staggered keyboard. But honestly, switching between a laptop and this keyboard is totally fine. It just maybe you need to acclimatize for about 10 minutes and then you're off to the races with either keyboard. So you're not gonna lose your muscle memory from your regular keyboard typing. So in the end, I have to say this keyboard is very impressive. The advanced customization, thoughtful features, Bluetooth connectivity, Everything about this keyboard screams end game professional keyboard. This is like the final boss of what it comes to split ergo keyboards. And I think you're going to be very happy with it. Now, yes, it's very expensive, but the customization, how it molds to the, your hands due to its contour design, the integrated palm rest, and then the natural finger movements just make it a very great ergonomic investment. I think this will definitely reduce any serious strain if you experience it or want to befriend it. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments about the Kinesis Advantage, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you in the next video.